You're listening to The Long Game Podcast. I'm your host, Sandra Scaiano. It's Valentine's Day week, another holiday in a pandemic. (laughs) I'm never a fan of going out on a day like this anyway. You know, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, those are two holidays that restaurants mess up with their special menus and pricings, and it always feels so routed and put together. And it just takes that special out for me. So for this Valentine's Day, I am content to continue doing my special little thing at home with my people. You know, the cynic in me will say that Valentine's Day is a manufactured holiday to sell a ton of red and heart-shaped crap. And at least, you know, Valentine's Day, I can find a card that is in tune with my sense of humor. Unlike some of the other manufactured holidays like uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, Hashtag worst cards ever. But really, who doesn't love love? I mean, how can you go against it? It's what we're made of. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about love. You're listening to The Long Game Podcast with Sandra Scaiano. In a world where everyone is doing, it's easy to get lost in a sea of comparison, secret tricks, and promises of overnight success. The long game is my approach to business, the actual day in and day out philosophy that you have to show up, you have to do the work, and there's no quick fixes for long-term success. I'm a web designer, digital strategist, and energetic thinker, and I'm here to share the process and lessons I experience with my clients daily who are going through the same struggles of building a business as you are. We'll hear from successful entrepreneurs sharing their long game strategies, and I'm fun, so we're going to have a little fun along the way too. Thanks for being here. Let's get to today's episode. So I was thinking about it. I went to a crystal bowl sound meditation that was performed by my good friend, Karen Foote of Moon Magic Wellness. And I say performed because if you're familiar, it's a performance, right? She lends herself and her energy to the session And if you're not familiar, crystal bowls are like big glass bowls of various sizes that you run a mallet along the rim to produce deep, penetrating vibrations and sound. You know, it's a deeper version of the playing the the rims of the water glass. And it's a benefit of having healer friends are experiences like these. And, you know, so while I was there, I was trying to get in peace out mode. You know, I was laid out and trying to relax. And that's when all the thoughts just come. You know, when you're trying to relax, you get to clear your mind a bit. But I spent a portion of my getting settled time thinking about my kids. You know, are they okay? Is my daughter jumping on her bed, falling and hitting her face on the shelf? You know, is this a form of mom guilt? You know, finally, I was getting some time away, some alone time. And I was only thinking about the people that I had been trying to take a break from. So I'm not a mushy mom type or the type of mom who thought I was destined to be a mom. And that's where I started thinking about that it's all love. We're just born to love. And I can't not think of my babes when we're apart because it's just love. All right, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, so I'm going to reel it back in. But what got me started on this love episode was that my Valentine's chocolate delivery arrived. My husband always orders my favorite chocolates for every holiday. We discovered this spot, Lilac Chocolates, while living in New York City. You know, those were our days before kids where we'd roam around, stop for a drink or some food along the way, and just take in what the city had to share. And it was at Lilac that I discovered their marshmallow bars. These are milk chocolate-coated marshmallow. But the marshmallow is unlike anything I had ever had before. It's whipped into like a silky smooth texture. Nothing rubbery, not like a regular manufactured marshmallow that you're thinking about. And really, for me, it was love at first bite. And since marshmallow is a favorite of mine, over the years, I have tried chocolate-covered marshmallows at many other confectioners, and nothing has compared to these. You know, as a matter of fact, because of how good the lilac bars are, others rank in at terrible. Not even like, okay, terrible. 
So we moved from Manhattan to Brooklyn and we discovered that the lilac factory was close by so that we could call or we could just go in and pick up at the factory direct rather than the shop, which we had to trek into the city for. And it was here that we met the owner. You know, it was a real delight to meet this craftsman. You know, he was so personable to us and he always remembered us when we came in. And of course, always had chocolate lollipops for the kids. And so for years, we'd stop by and pick up goodies. And now having moved out of Brooklyn, we have them shipped to us here in suburbia. (laughs) And I share the story because it's one of brand loyalty. I have followed this product faithfully for 20 years through different homes, through different times in my life. And yes, I really like sweets. I'm ordering this stuff all the time. But it goes to show that creating a product artfully and consistently and becoming part of your customer's memories, if you can, it creates ultimate brand loyalty. And this notion, it doesn't only apply to physical products. You can build brand loyalty for your online courses and your services as well. The key is to deliver consistent experiences for those you work with and to develop a relationship with your clients and your customers. I mean, there are people who I have bought one course from years ago. Then at a later date, I joined their membership. Then at another time, their coaching program. And then even participated in more courses over the years that they had. They consistently delivered information that I used to fuel my business growth. And over the years, because of that, I created a real life relationship with them. Brand loyalty right there, right there. And as service providers and course creators, we tend not to think of ourselves as a brand, but you so are. Your brand is everything that you do. It's your work and how thorough it is. It's how you make your people feel. It's what you reveal about yourself in the process. And of course, it's the look and feel of all your touch points working together. You've got a brand, and the more you start thinking you do, the more you can use your brand to connect with those you serve and start to build brand loyalty. Keep this thought in mind as you go forward with your work. You are a brand. All right, this is a short one this week, and I'm sending you all lots of love. Hop onto Instagram, comment on this episode's post, and let me know one thing that you are doing to share the love of your work with your clients and customers. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more info in the show notes at thelonggamepodcast.net. If today's show connected with you in some way, please share it with your friends or hop on iTunes and leave me a review. Until next time, keep playing the long game.